Welcome to this week's episode. Today we are talking about uh, three aviation direct mail campaigns for 2020 and 2021. So I'm Paula Williams. And I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you out there in the aviation world sell more products and services. Absolutely. Uh, so 2020 was crazy. And not to be repeated. <laughs> exactly. But it does impact some things, right? And influence next year whether we like it or not. Exactly. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. We'll be glad when it's over. Uh, <laughs> but it is going to be an influence on uh, marketing and demographics and a bunch of other things that we have to worry about for some time. So nothing has changed about what works in marketing, right? I mean, there are some things that never change. And one of those things that never changes is the campaign, right? Yep. Uh, and a campaign is a list, an offer, and a presentation. So the list is who are the best people that we should reach out to. The offer is what is the most attractive thing that we can offer them. And the presentation is what is the most effective way we can get that in front of people. That's like gravity, right? Nothing changes about the fact that you have to have all three of those things in a campaign. Yeah, to get people interested. Exactly. Uh, what has changed is everything else. <laughs> it's changed the way we get lists. It's changed the way we do offers. It's changed the way we present those offers for sure, right? In fact, there was, I don't remember who said it, mm. but somebody said 20% of the people don't need to be sold. 20% mm -hmm. of the people you can't sell to. Mm -hmm which leaves the other 60% of who you're working with. Exactly. And uh, a lot of times that 60% is what really makes the difference between uh, living and dying uh, as a company. Uh, so, you know, you want to be uh, keep your company healthy. And a lot of times we've had to shift one or more of these factors, um, the list, the offer, or the presentation, because of things that have happened over the last year. Yep. Okay. All right. So... First thing is uh, direct mail does still work. And I'm gonna share a couple of statistics for you. Um, direct mail does work in the digital world. Um, if you're one of the direct mailing company, direct mail marketing companies continuing to generate sales and leads from this source, you know this is true. Uh, but some people wonder or even ask, why do you focus on something that is so old school? Because it works. Exactly. <laughs> The massive shift to digital ads doesn't mean that direct mail marketing doesn't produce results. In fact, direct mail is alive now more than ever. And um, a few of the things that are leading into that are the fact that everyone is so flooded with digital materials. Uh, you know, everybody has um, an inbox that they never get to the bottom of. At least I do. <laughs> really. Uh, uh, he's our um, <clears throat> Mr. Tech guy, as well as all of the other hats that he wears, and uh, the fact that I never get to the bottom of my inbox is well known among the two of us. So, um, email, complete flood. Uh, digital marketing, that's a little bit better because you can pay money to target your ads to people, and you know, you can. Uh, be very specific about the people you want those to go to, but still, they are seeing so many ads. Uh, the average person sees more ads now than they did even five years ago, even with all that targeting going on. So it's kind of crazy. Um, all right, so the first thing you want to think about is what do I want to accomplish with my marketing and, uh, you know, what can mail do for me? Uh -huh. Andy, what, what have you done for me lately, <laughs> right? Okay, so here's a way to combine the two. You know, obviously we love using all of this fantastic technology and all of this fantastic data that we now have access to that we didn't three years ago even, right? True. And we get it for free. Um, actually, in some cases, we may be paying for retargeting um, cookie or something like that. We may be paying for forms on our website that deliver us leads. Uh, we may be... Um, but the data itself is what you're saying is free. Exactly. Um, we're using, in our group, um, our clients use Lead Feeder, which provides information about people that have visited your website and things like that. So uh, there's lots of ways to collect information about people's online activity and then to retarget that with a postcard or a 
some kind of direct mail. And what that does is it just kind of like leaps off the page, right? Or leaps off the screen into the real world. Uh, people feel differently about something that they can feel in their hands, something that's tangible. Um, a lot of the aviation decision makers are um, 45 plus, college educated, um, male, military background, and so forth. Nothing is real to these kind of people until it's on paper, right? I mean, at least it becomes more real when it's on paper. Right. Yeah. It's a psychological thing, you know, but it is absolutely valid. Something you have to deal with. Right. Exactly. So you can argue about this all day long if you're a millennial or, or um, Gen Xer or anything else, that things online are just as real as things that are printed. We don't disagree with that, we however. Do. Exactly. So. However. <laughs> right. So... A way to do this is to take those lists of data, and a lot of people get these lists and don't do anything with them. You know, so they get tons and tons and tons of leads, and then they never follow up on them. The easiest thing in the world is just to slap a, um, or have some piece of software that creates a mailing label when someone, uh, when someone does a certain series of actions online. Um, the simplest form of this is someone fills out a form on your website and request an information package, and then you put something together and send it to them uh, in the mail, not online, not to their email, right? Right. Okay. This does two things. Number one, you get to request their physical address, and they're more likely to give that to you if they are a legitimate entity. And number two, it gives you the opportunity to really showcase your work in a way that your competitors are not doing, because they're just sending them an email, and you're sending them a box or a envelope or something, you know, that has uh, more information in it that, uh, that makes sense. So you fill out a form on one of ABCI's websites, depending on the form that you fill out, and depending on how qualified you are, uh, based on our software and other things, you may get a blue folder like this one in the mail. And some of you probably have gotten these before, that has a catalog and some uh, customer success stories and some checklists and other things that are really useful. And some specific there. data for the individual exactly and it's custom to you and has a handwritten note on it and you know so that's a lot more effective than just sending an email and that's why we take the time to do that right exactly yeah okay um if you're using if you're one of our team members you'll you'll recognize this very very well this is our lead feeder results so i can see that someone from boeing has visited abci's website um, three times over the last 30 days and has left a pretty detailed uh, set of breadcrumbs. Now, I can't necessarily tell which individual at Boeing did this because uh, Boeing's a big company, but if I've been talking with Boeing or if I have uh, people in my LinkedIn that I'm connected with on Boeing or from Boeing, then, of course, I'm going to send them blue folders, Right. Uh, because I can see that there are some specific things that they are interested in, and I can probably guess who those people are. Oh, yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot to figure if it's a sales guy or an engineer. Exactly. So that's really, really helpful, and uh, that's how we do um, retargeting online activity, either a form or some kind of software or some kind of targeting re cookie, tar retargeting cookie, retargeting cookie, um, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Okay? Cool. So that's campaign number one. Campaign number two is uh, to send an information package before or after a consultation. Um, so a lot of times we will schedule a consultation with someone and it happens so fast that we can't get them mail uh, right. prior. Uh, but we do send something after the fact that here's a nice follow-up, maybe here's um, a transcript of our conversation, here are um, you know some other information that we didn't get to because of time, but that you had asked about and I told you I would follow up with you. Um, following up by mail is um, more effective than following up by email. Uh, once again, because those emails can get lost more easily and because there's a tangible um, impact of mail that uh, just kind of adds to the credibility of your consultation. Plus, with, with real, real snail mail, mm -hmm. postal mail. Yeah. You can get past the gatekeepers mm -hmm. in a, one way or the other. we got some interesting stories for later about that. Exactly. And you can be really creative with direct mail in ways that you can't be uh, with email. So um, 
And that's one of the reasons if you're having trouble with a gatekeeper, you can always send a package rather than a postcard uh, because most executives will have packages forwarded to them and they may not have postcards or anything that looks like an ad uh, sent to them. Okay, so that's campaign number two, follow up after, before or after a consultation. Um, campaign number three is um, if you've got a big list that you need to figure out who on this list is interested in your product or service, uh, a postcard is probably the most cost-effective way to do that. Of course, you can do an email broadcast, but the open rates have been going down. <laughs> and uh, you can get in, depending on what rights you have to that list, in a lot of cases, if that comes from an industry-specific association or something like that, the terms of service don't let you email them, but they almost always let you send them a postcard. Right. Uh, so, you know, you could spend, um, you know, to target 500 people, you could spend 250 bucks uh, on postage, you know, get them a, a postcard. And then of those people, some of them are going to raise their hand and... This depends on having a great call to action on that postcard and a great offer. So once again, you've got your list, your offer, and your presentation. So your offer has to be something low cost and low risk, something like a really good, useful, urgent, ultra-specific free consultation like we talked about last week, right? Exactly. Um, and so, you know, if it's something that's super attractive to the right person, then those postcards can be very effective in getting somebody to raise their hand and say, I'm interested. The best call to action uh, for a postcard is a phone call. And I don't like this answer because I would much rather have them fill out a form <laughs> online. <laughs> it's less work for me. Uh, but uh, you know, all of the data suggests that the very best and most effective call to action for a postcard is to get them to call your office. Um, someone that calls, makes a phone call, is 10 times more likely to make a purchase than someone who fills out an online form. That's me. That's you. Yeah, I mean, that's the demographic that we're after is this guy right here. Somebody who is um, male, not 20, and uh, <laughs> college educated and all of, all of those things. Uh, they're a whole lot more likely to pick up the phone when they have a question and they want information right away. And they're actually in buying mode than uh, to fill out an online form. You got it. Cool. So as much as I dislike... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that answer and wish it were different that's the reality that we're dealing with so if your call to action from your postcard is call us to schedule a free consultation and then you actually have a human being answer the phone uh, and schedule those consultations that's really the gold standard of uh, getting those postcards to work well for you right? Yep. Okay. alright so that's three campaigns uh, for 2020 20, 20 and 2021, uh, once again, those were retargeting people based on their online activity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they were sending something before or after a consultation, yes. so following up before or after. And number three was uh, basically a winnowing of a large list or prospecting a large list to get uh, the people who were the most interested. and closing for a phone call. So all of those are, um, actually that applies to every single one of those campaigns. You know, if you can close for a phone call and say, call our office and then we will send you um, a book or whatever, or schedule another consultation with a larger set of your team, or you know, whatever your, your next step in your sales process is. If you can get that phone call, that's really the most most effective way of uh, getting a response for your, getting a good, good return on investment for your direct mail campaigns. Yes, it is. Even now. <clears throat> Even now. <laughs> Everything else has changed, but some things don't. All right, so go sell more stuff. The industry needs the business. Absolutely. Thank you, Zig Ziglar. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, John. Yep. You can stay healthy, be happy. See you next time. <laughs>